right, guys, we are going to get started with our training. Yay! Yay. To our training portion of the night. Um, so, uh, obviously, we've talked about this before. Our trains are kind of different this year, right? Uh, and you guys are probably used to this by now. Usually, if you do train with us for a mission trip, it's a lot of hands on type of content, talk about what we're doing in our projects. But this year, it's a lot more. Uh, talking about mindset so we get our minds and our hearts ready for what uh, we're going to get to do over there in Philadelphia that can hopefully relate to any project that we're put in. Uh, so that's why a lot of our content is dealing a lot more with kind of uh, the way we think about people and think about community and stuff like that rather than hands-on. So first question, if you've been catching on to our theme as we've run through, what we've always done is our first question. Uh, if you would make your board look like mine, where you split up into three sections and take. <laughs> it doesn't have to be all the colors, I know. I'm lucky I have four colors up here. Uh, and discussing your groups and try to recall uh, what you can from each of the, our past training sessions. So, uh, the general idea, any kind of main points that came across, uh, mark those down and we will go over it here in a minute. So. Well, you see. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, gather back in. I know I didn't give you a ton of time, but as long as we got some main points. Um, so let's go to Aaron's group. What do you guys have as far as what we talked about on day one? Okay. Oh, you have a fool now. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, we about shalom. Shalom. And koinonia. Koinonia, yep. And then community. Right. Awesome. So our main topic was community. Shalom. Right. And so we talked about several different words uh, on our first training in relation to community. We talked about koinonia, which is talking about biblical com community as far as the community within us as believers. We talked about how God himself lived himself. So, wow. uh, live in community as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, and we also talked about shalom, which uh, you might want to keep that word in mind later on. Wink, wink. Um, this group right here, what do you have from session two? Uh, not much. <laughs> not much? <laughs> What's not much? I was basically drafting for this five on what I was We'll yeah. talk about that later, Nathaniel. What do you got? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's so, so kind talk of about a, a week two was equality. Equality. And much I'm, I'm not supposed to get more while I'm off the book. Uh, do you have anything else to add? Uh, I do have a few things to add. <laughs> what? Not about us. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, I, one, of the that, one thing they talked about is what asked the, what not asked, or what was teaching asked the question Do you really believe everybody is equal? Right. And he basically had us all stop and really think about it, and we and all of us quickly discovered, quickly discovered, I'm not so sure I do. Right. Okay. Nice. Yep. All right. Talking about whether we are all equal. Uh, this group. What do you guys have for uh, our second session? Uh, create equal. All right. Okay. So we talked about um, equality. So we're talking about first of all that all human beings were made equal, made in the image of God. And then we also talked about, in the same way, we are all equally um, broken by sin, right? That all of us now are in the same place. It um, doesn't matter who we are, where we come from, what our skin color is, anything like that, that we are equally broken. Um, and so in those ways, we all are equal. Uh, this group right here, what did you guys get for, the, for training three? Diversity. Diversity. And uh, how it can make a group better. Nice. Right, okay. So we, so Derek talked a lot about diversity, about how while we are all created equal, that we are all equally broken, still because of God's great creation, uh, he also made us very different, right? Many of us have different backgrounds, we have different stories, um, different personalities, um, and the fact that we are all diverse actually works towards equality, right? It works towards us being able to work together be able to make up for each other's downfalls, and that whenever we can pull that together, you can actually have a great picture of what equality can be. So this is where we've been so far, so far today, or 
throughout our training, it's not just today. <laughs> um, so tonight, we are going to be moving on to uh, actually an idea that we've already talked about, okay? Um, some of you guys, it's actually already been brought up tonight. Uh, some that Matt brought up our first training when we talked about community. What is one of the words that we talked about with community? Shalom or peace. Shalom, peace, right? Okay, so we're talking about the word shalom tonight, okay? We're bringing it back here. Uh, we're talking about peace, right? Uh, this idea of a perfected community, well, maybe not perfected, but this uh, very well-running community that is peaceful, right? And so, you know, Matt talked about this, and then we talked about the effects of sin, right? The effect of how, with how all of us are equally broken, so has shalom been broken, right? In the same way, this idea of the way God created us to live in community with each other as human beings, as a church, but also just in this world, has been broken by sin, okay? A little bit more on shalom, and, and we talked about this before. Um, uh, there's a guy, his name was Cornelius Plantinga. I think that's how you say his name. You would think that this guy like wrote something like back in the 1300s. He actually wrote a book in 1995. Um, fun story for you. But he has this great quote on, um, on what shalom is. He says, the webbing together of God, humans and all creation and justice, fulfillment and delight is what the Hebrew prophets call shalom. We call it peace, but it means far more than uh, mere peace of mind or ceasefire between enemies in the Bible. Shalom means universal flourishing. Wholeness and delight, a rich state of affairs in which natural needs are satisfied and natural gifts fruitfully employed a state of affairs that inspires joyful wonder as its creator and savior opens doors and welcomes the creatures in whom he delights. Shalom, in other words, is the way things ought to be. So just to unpack that a little bit, that was a long quote, I know. Uh, so, all right, so here's a picture, right? Sin's effect on this world, so we got sin down here. Uh, some things we can think of is like discomfort, uh, war, right, okay? So I think we can all agree that this is not shalom, right? This is the effects that we've seen in our world from sin and how it has affected us negatively. And then up here we have uh, um, flourishing, right? Okay, this kind of this idea of thing not only just being peaceful, but flourishing, people growing, people thriving as a community, okay? Now this is true shalom right here, but here's the thing is, we tend, whenever we think of the idea of shalom as just peace, we kind of put it right here in the middle. Right, we kind of put it as, you know what, we're, we're away from the sin, the discomfort, the issues, but things are just kind of okay, <laughs> right? Nothing terrible is happening, but I think we tend to downgrade what shalom really means whenever we do that, that shalom means more than that, and that's what um, this author here is trying to say, that it's more than that. It's not just simply being able to make it through each day without too much discomfort. No, it means that uh, your life, your peace within yourself, with other people uh, as believers, but also the community around you is flourishing. You guys are growing together for good. Okay, so shalom is this idea that um, is definitely desirable, right? We're gonna take a second here and look back into the Old Testament. We're gonna look at what shalom looks like back in the Old Testament. Okay, uh, to set the stage a little bit, we're gonna be in Jeremiah, right? Okay, so who knows, uh, what's the background of Jeremiah? Anybody kind of give us a little quick synopsis, idea of what's going on in Jeremiah? Nathaniel? In Jeremiah, the nation of Israel is in, is in moral decay, and Babylon's about to wipe it out. Right, okay, so what's going on here, right? Uh, Israel has been warned multiple times by Jeremiah. Uh, God sent Jeremiah to warn the people of Israel that they needed to repent of their sin. Uh, they were committing idolatry, um, false teaching, a lot of terrible things that were going on in the nation of Israel. And Jeremiah was sent to t call them to repent, and uh, Israel did not. And so as a result, um, basically, uh, when the section we're going to be reading about, basically this is God telling them that they're about to head into cap t captivity by Babylon, which is basically their biggest enemies, and that they're going to be in captivity for 70 years. Right? Things aren't looking too good for Israel at the moment, right? 
Okay, so I want to, us to read this passage. So, with your Bibles, I want you guys to get in your groups and read Jeremiah 29, verses 4 through 7. Jeremiah 29, verses 4 through 7. All right, and here's what I want you guys to do, okay? I want you guys to look for shalom in this passage. Where do you see shalom prevalent in this passage? Get to work. All right, so uh, the question is, how do you see shalom represented here in this passage using your own words? Um, let's see, can we start with this group? Yes. <clears throat> um, he said that we saw it in like local <laughs> areas. Like this doesn't describe shalom, but we saw it was within their own community, throughout ongoing generations, and then the city they were exiled in. And uh, shalom comes through a relationship with God. It's not produced by God because they were supposed to pray for the peace of the city. Right. Um, and then one member of our group was very fixated on shalom means gardens. Very nice, gardens. <laughs> so, nice. So. nice. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I this group next time was so funny. So, <clears throat> seeking God's prosperity. Seeking. I'm sorry. One more time. Seeking God's prosperity. Okay. Nice. Nice. Awesome. All right. Let's group here. Find peace in your community. Thankful for the peace that God provided, and continue to live and prosper. Awesome. Let's group here. Right. We didn't quite get through all of it. That's okay. That's all right. For four through five, we got the gardens and the courage to leave Israel, and then the strength to build the houses. And awesome. Awesome, right. Okay, so you guys really nailed all of them on the head here. Um, we see a lot of ideas of how the Israelites were to be uh, what we will refer today as agents of shalom. I know, agents of shalom. It's cheesy, but I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. So, yeah, agents, yeah. So, agents of shalom, right? They are to be people of peace, people of prosperity in one of the most difficult environments they probably could have been in, right? They're in captivity for the next 70 years. And God is calling them to not only care for their own people, for their own, to care for their own family. <laughs> they're asking them to do that. But they're even asking them to dwell and to pursue growth within the, the land that they are now sent to, the land that they are now deported to, as it's referred to, right? So not only are they supposed to help themselves, but they're supposed to live peacefully and for the good of the entire area that they were in at that point. And it also talks about how not only will those people reap the benefits, but so will they as they do that. And uh, also the point that uh, one of these groups brought up, you know, that this power only comes through God, right? Shalom is not attainable by our own effort, <laughs> okay? And they made this abundantly clear. This shalom is a result of the work of God in our lives, right? And so that it was important for them to be dependent on God to bring this idea of shalom to their people. Okay, so uh, Jeremiah 29. What is the first thing that comes to your mind whenever you think Jeremiah 29? What's the verse that comes to mind? 11. 11, <laughs> right? Jeremiah 29, 11, right? I think a ton of people have this as their favorite verse, all right? Um, and knowing this background, I hope that gives this passage so much more meaning to you when you read this. I'm just going to go ahead and read this to you guys. If you're not familiar, you're probably familiar with this passage. Uh, Jeremiah 29, and uh, we'll start in verse 10. It says, this is what the Lord says when 70 years are completed for Babylon. Uh, for Babylon. I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. And here's the verse that we all often know in here. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Okay? Uh, well, actually, let's keep on reading. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which 
I carried you into exile, right? And so through it all, after him giving this really kind of a tough task to the nation of Israel, he's given them hope, saying, hey, if you abide in me, if you come to me in prayer, I will be with you. If you choose to be agents of, uh, I almost said agents of shield. Uh, if you, if you, yeah. Um, if you choose to be agents of shalom, then I, then the plans that I have for you are going to be for good, right? Yes, 70 years is a long time. You're going to endure a lot of hard things, but the result of living in shalom in such circumstances can result in peace. It can result in plans for good to help them. Okay, so this idea of shalom, right? Living in our communities around us. Uh, and being agents of shalom. Uh, go ahead and, and head back to your whiteboard, and here's a question I want to ask you today, okay? <laughs> to bring this down to our level a little bit, okay? What are some things that you see in our city of Dubois, or kind of this area, that seem to go against the nature of God, right? So they're in Babylon, uh, people who, uh, many of them probably weren't believers, not following God's way, and yet they were expected to be people of shalom in that place, right? And so how do we, as believers, in a city that is broken, in a world that is broken, uh, what are some ways that we see our area going against the way God wanted things to be, and what are some ways that we can be agents of shalom in our area now. Some practical ways of how we can be agents of shalom in our town right now. Got it? All right, get to work. All right, so how do you see this, uh, our area maybe in ways that is against the way God intended to be, and what can we do to be agents of shalom in our community? Uh, this group, let's start right here. What do you guys uh, have? Um, they said some very autistic yeah. ways, but they just said, why don't you be blunt? Drugs, <laughs> drinking, crimes. Well, you uh, said drones in there. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please be quiet? I'm talking. You said drones. Okay, what else? <laughs> and, and they said, and uh, they said one of my, but I'm just going to say sexual perversion. Okay, sure, absolutely. Um, Aaron, screw. All right. Um, when Marissa sits up, she'll be happy to share. Um, so we have like, there's been a lot of like drug use and abortion, like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Yes. All right. uh, well, uh, always give us some stuff in how can we be agents of shalom in that. Okay. We could make plans like for. All right, guys, let's not. We could make plans for like mothers, like other options. Uh -huh. Um, we could monitor the city because there's a lot of like crime that goes on at late night, so yeah. we could like get the like, security and stuff. Right. Awesome. Cool. Uh, this group right up. Thank you. We have poverty, broken families, alcoholism, abuse, immorality, and we can like pray for that and volunteer for things and raise awareness, and help out. Yeah. Awesome. This group. Uh, we have 100 people, sick, sickness and diseases, bad choices, broken homes, been a rejection of God. <laughs> what can we do? You guys have any of those? So the film mentioned was, like, did you say it was a friendly one? Like, that whenever he sees, like, an ambulance go by, like, it's a reminder, like, that, you know, that's a result of sin, like, right. or something happens, uh, and he plays for, you know, whatever the situation is. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Awesome, guys. You guys have gave some really great um, answers. And really, whenever it comes to this idea of being people of shalom, agents of shalom here, uh, anywhere, really, uh, first of all, you have to dream. This is going to sound very cheesy. I know. I know. This is going to sound very cheesy. You got to dream big, right? Uh, but I don't say that in a way of thinking of these things that are very just out there and unrealistic. But no, we have ground for it. We need to think with this kind of a kind of a holy imagination of what God intended our world to look like, 
right? We need to live with this attitude of how God intended us to be living. And then we need to go out there in the thick of it, right? And it can seem overwhelming, right? Because there, you know, I'm sure it's probably, maybe not, but I imagine in your groups, as it would probably be for me, easier to come up with the list of all the things that are wrong with our area, all the things that it goes against God's nature than it is to think of what we can do, right? Because it seems like so much, right? It seems like too much for us. Well, uh, you guys gave some great answers. I especially appreciate like the very practical ways to meet those different uh, needs that we have in our area. But uh, just to encourage you, we're not gonna walk through this like we were before, because uh, we don't wanna get you guys out too late today. Um, but uh, right, a common verse, right? The greatest commandment. What's the greatest commandment that God gave us? All right, yeah, right. So it's love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, right? And then he says, this is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands, <laughs> right? And uh, we see multiple times where this idea is brought up, right? Um, a, a great one is whenever in Luke, right? Uh, Jesus is approached by a lawyer, right? And he approaches him and says, hey, basically, what do I need to do to be able to inherit, inherit the kingdom of God? Basically, what does it require? And, uh, and basically, Jesus tells a parable, as he often does, right? Um, and he tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, right? I'm sure a lot of us are familiar right by now about the Good Samaritan, who uh, many people passed by this man, uh, who was hurt, who was injured, um, who was in dire need, who was crying for help, uh, and very uh, people people passed him that would be the ones that you'd expect to help, right? Like a priest, right? You'd expect a priest to be the one that helps, but he doesn't, but happens to be a Samaritan man who is actually, his people are basically enemies of his people, right? So the last person you'd expect, and he showed shalom in this area against a lot of um, broken sin that is between these two people, right? A lot of injustice that takes place between these two nations. A lot of um, just awful sin that happens between them. He, he looked through that and reached a need and was an agent of shalom. Two things. Okay, and, uh, and, we, and so kind of the whole idea that we're talking about here is um, how we can practically show people shalom. And, it, and Jesus makes it simple. Simple, hard. Right? Okay. Simple, but hard. Love God and love your neighbor. Love God and love your neighbor. If you do these two things, you've fulfilled all the commands given by God. Right? Another quick idea that we want to talk about real quick before we finish up is proximity. Okay? The idea of proximity. What does proximity mean? Who knows? Where you're at. Where you're at. Right? Uh, to be people of shalom, right, there's many things that we can do outside of close proximity to be people of shalom, right? Prayer. Prayer for those who are around us, uh, constantly doing stuff for them. But we should never lose the idea of being in close proximity to those who need to be shown shalom, right? And so that's why we do things like this trip, right? Uh, we already are in a place that is in close proximity, okay? So what I'm not saying is that you have to go to Philadelphia to show Shalom, because as we just listed, we have a lot of needs here in our own town, right? We have a lot of areas that um, our town needs people of Shalom. But this is also why we go to areas like Philadelphia. We're going into the thick of it, guys. Uh, I have been there, some of us have been there before. This was my first, and actually, my first missions trip, and actually, now that we know that we're like in the Kensington area, like, I've served on these street, this street before. Uh, a long time ago, and I was very young and immature and weird, um, <laughs> so I'm excited to see it with new adult mature eyes. Um, but we are going into the thick of sin, we're going into the thick of corruption, of injustice, to be people, of Shalom. And um, to finish off here, uh, guys, we leave on this trip in just a few days. And uh, for those of you who have been on this on a lot of trips, maybe this is still scary for you. I've been on however many missions trips, and it still makes me nervous. <laughs> okay, so don't feel 
like that's wrong. <laughs> like I said, I've done so many of these trips and I still feel nervous about this trip, right? And maybe some of you, this is your first type of a mission trip, first time going to an area like this, and it's, uh, it's scary. And we're called to be people of Shalom, right? We're there to reach out to people groups that are much different than us, right? Uh, people that come from different backgrounds, people that we might not fully understand, but God has given us a mission to be people of Shalom to them. And so for those of you who are maybe nervous about this or whatever, uh, I just want to read the passage I already read to you um, as peace and comfort, as uh, Jesus said to, or as God said to the Israelites um, in Babylon as they're about to really endure much harder circumstance than we are this week, this coming week, right? Uh, some of the hardest circumstances you can, and this is what he gave them for peace, and we can take it um, and apply it to our own situation because we're going to be people of shalom and hopefully that God will work it together for good for us, that we will grow through this experience, for the churches that are already there, that this will create opportunities for them to minister to more people and also for the people specifically that we are going to be interacting with, that this might be the one opportunity that they have to see people that aren't going to look at them differently, that aren't going to treat them differently because they come from different backgrounds, but be people of shalom as people who are people just like us, who are just as broken as us, just as in need of a Savior as we are. So I'm going to finish this off, take comfort in this passage, we'll pray, and we'll move on, and hopefully not end too late. Um, verse 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place which I carried you into exile. God's got a great plan for us this week. And God's got a great plan for what he's going to do through us and through the church and through the people this week. And so we can take comfort in that. Just a couple reminders, and then we're going to spend some time praying, okay? So Saturday, remember, uh, we are meeting here at the church. I think we're just going to go ahead and meet here at the, well, uh, no, let's meet up at the foyer of the church. That's usually best that way. It gives us a little more space to check everybody in, okay? So we'll meet up at the foyer of the church. Uh, make sure to bring your luggage with you, and you're supposed to be here when? 6.45 a.m. 6.45 a.m. That gives us time to get all our details in a row and uh, hopefully pull out by 7.15. Hey, if you think that's early, count your blessings. When we do like our international trips, a lot of times it's like we're meeting here at midnight or 1 a.m. or 4 a.m. or whatever to drive all night, and, you know, that sort of thing. So trust me, this isn't bad, okay? So 6.45. Um, and then we'll head out for Philly. We'll stop for lunch on the way, and then we'll check in, and then they'll kind of lead us from there, okay? Uh, remember for your luggage, uh, if there's any confusion on this, basically we're saying please limit your luggage to one, you know, big item, and then, you know, a backpack or something like that. And obviously your bedding is kind of something on the side, okay? And that's, so we're just trying to avoid you bringing like three huge suitcases, all right? Um, I won't say anything. So, um, any questions about packing, itinerary, anything like that? So it's been a pretty straightforward trip in that way, which is nice. Okay, so what we're gonna do here at the end um, is we're gonna take uh, a little extra time and pray. And I'll just be very honest with you. One of the things that concerns me about not having more longer, intense trainings um, is that this has been a trip that's been a little bit easier to just not like think about. It's like, hey, I'll show up for training and I'll participate in the discussions, but then I don't have to do anything until next Tuesday. And just, you know, wait for the text reminder. Oh yeah, mom, I need a ride. You know, sort of thing, right? So this has been a trip that's been easier to not think about. Um, we haven't had as many experiences that have made us uncomfortable in front of each other and had to deal with that as a group. Uh, in other trainings, you know, there's been those times where, hey, you got to get up and teach a lesson in front of the group, and that's vulnerable, and it's scary. Um, but then it's unifying, 
because we would offer each other feedback and we'd encourage each other, right? And we'd overcome our fears. And so, um, so this trip is wonderful in the sense that it hasn't been as heavy preparation and it makes me a little more nervous, right? Because we haven't had that preparation to get our heads in it and to get ourselves together as a team. Um, but one of the things that is really unifying as a team is to pray together, right? And so uh, we're going to go a few minutes over tonight, and uh, but we're going to pray. And the way we're going to do it is this. Is I'm going to pray, um, and then the floor will just be open. And uh, if you have something that you'd like to pray about you know, with our team, uh, just go ahead and speak up and pray. And somebody else can go, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then Aaron will close things out. And uh, Dan gave us some good categories to think through, so if you're kind of like, I don't even know what I pray about, right? Um, there's our group. There's the people that we're going to be ministering with. There's the neighborhood church, Pastor Ken. There's the Great Commission church that we'll be staying at. There's a different ministry that we're going to be ministering in in Kensington, right? Um, there's the groups that we'll be ministering alongside. There's two other youth groups that are getting ready. You know, who are arranging their transportation and all that stuff and dealing with, you know, sickness or last minute whatevers. Um, so there's other teams walking through this. Uh, and then there's the people that we're going to minister to, right? The people that you're going to meet in Kensington. Uh, the people that you're going to meet when we walk around, you know, the neighborhood of Great Commission Church on our first night there, right? Uh, things like that. And so maybe that gives you some, some categories to think through. And I just want to challenge you, if something does come to your mind, uh, be courageous. Speak up and pray. Lead our group in prayer. And uh, let's kind of let this be our, our last thing together. Calling out to God together uh, before we meet on Saturday and go off. And hopefully have um, a very stretching, challenging, but awesome uh, four or five days together. Okay? So I'll pray. And if you have something to, to lead us in, speak up. Father, thank you for this group and uh, what we get to do. And God, we know that uh, this trip is most of all about the gospel. And we pray that Jesus would be honored in how we grow, in the ministry that we experience, the ministry that we do. Uh, but God, I also pray that you would grow us and change our perspective. Um, that when we come back to Dubois and we see people around our community and our, our neighbors and uh, when we're out shopping and we just see people and meet people, interact with them, God, I pray that we would have hearts that are more like yours. Now, we don't see the differences, but we see the similarities of people who uh, were made by you and are broken just like us and are able to be saved and grow and shown grace just like us. And so God, I pray that you grow our hearts uh, on this trip. Dear Lord, thank you for this night that we could come together and prepare a little bit more for this trip and just hear what you have to say to us in your word. And Lord, please help us to have a good trip. And please give our group unity as we go throughout the week. And please help everyone to get along. And there not to be any big ordeals. And Lord, just give us the strength that we need to make it through this week. In Jesus' name. God, I pray for uh, this group tonight. I pray for uh, safety as we travel. pray for safety as we're down there. I pray that you would help us to be adaptable to what we're going to be experiencing down there. I pray for uh, the other two groups that we'll be meeting and staying with, that we would all just get along, and that we would just be like one community right off the bat. I pray that uh, you would work in us and through us in a mighty way. Dear God, I pray for our group, for, 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 for you all as people, but everybody has their quirks and tendencies and, and basically parts of them. And as a parts of them, they can be unpleasant. As, as so I pray this week we, that you will give us all patience, patience, and I, I bet you will help us to subvert those things, those things that now you're taking to others. And and I pray, and and I pray, and I pray that you will keep, and that you will keep our team unified and keep us, keep, keep us, and help keep us reasonable and calm. We will calm so there's no arguments. Uh, Lord, help us not to underestimate the value of this trip and realize that although it's just across the state and not across the country, that it's still an opportunity for us and those we are serving and those we are serving with to grow and love. Father God, I pray that as we go on this trip, Lord, that you would help us to see 
the people that we come in contact with, Lord, as, as you saw them and the accounts in Scripture were, Lord, you love the people that seemed like the outcasts and the downtrodden. Lord, I would just pray that you would open our eyes to this, Lord, and as we know, we'll be in some situations that are uncomfortable, Father. I would just pray that you give us all boldness and give us just a, a peaceful, shalom spirit as we're learning here tonight, Lord, to just show your love and that just whatever situations, Father, come up, that you would just help us to be genuine, you know, agents of you, Father, to just share your love with people and just open those doors, Lord, that uh, we can have the opportunities to share you, share you with those we come in contact with, Lord. And just thank you for the awesome privilege it is to, to carry your word to the others, Lord, and we just pray that, uh, that you bring fruit from it, Father, unite us as a group, and thank you again for the opportunity, Lord. Lord God, I pray for more boldness this week as we um, are going to be in circumstances that we're pretty uncomfortable in. Um, I pray that we don't shy away from the uncomfortableness, um, but we understand that it's um, something that you can use to, to help us grow and to help us become more like your son. Um, I just pray again just that we're bold in those situations, that we don't um, become scared or, or ignore the uncomfortableness or just try to be comfortable, um, but we use it, um, again, to just become more like you, become more like your son, um, and do the best just for you. God, we just thank you for um, just this team that you've given to us, and I know Matt and I are just so thankful for each person, um, for each leader um, that's, that's volunteered to come on this trip, and so we thank you for that. Um, and God, we're excited to see what you're going to do with our group. Um, I do pray that um, just amongst the girls this next um, week that we are kind um, and appreciate each other, um, that we're helpful no matter what our emotions are telling us or where our energy levels at. I pray that we would be kind and godly. Um, and I pray the same thing for um, the guys, that they would enjoy each other and um, see each other with um, the same eyes that you would want them um, to be viewed through. And uh, God, we do, um, we do ask that you would do just really awesome things through us. Um, and so I, I pray that for each person here that we would make an effort this next week to um, just memorize the passage in Luke um, because we realize that um, even though we've trained and learned, um, we know that nothing's going to happen apart from you. And so when we reach out to people or talk to people in scary situations, we recognize that we really have nothing to offer them, um, but it's only going to be through your word and what you're doing. Um, that anything will be accomplished. And so I pray that we would be faithful to memorize that passage, and I pray that this week we would be faithful to um, just be prayerful and to spend just other time in your word, and we trust that that is what you will use um, through us this next week. Um, and again, we thank you for tonight and just for this really fun team, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So hey, um, hope you all have a wonderful July 4th tomorrow. And then after that, as you pack, prepare, etc., if you have any questions at all, uh, don't hesitate to call, text, Facebook, whatever, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, otherwise, we will see you Saturday morning, 6.45 with your luggage and a memorized verse.